Hey guys, it's Tricky Reborn here, and just by the title of the video, you already know what's the topic about. And in case you don't know, at the end of Johnny Cage vs. Captain Falcon, it was real that Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender vs. Edward Eric from Full Metal Alchemist will be the next death battle. And oh boy, I have issues with this. Now this will probably be a controversial video just from the topic alone, but I feel like I have to give my thoughts out out of the way. Now, when I saw that Aang versus Edward was going to be the next episode, my reaction went a little something like this. And as you can tell, it wasn't very positive. Cause when I found out that Aang versus Edward was going to be the next death battle, the first thing I said was, why? Like, why did you need to do this match instead of the more better opponents for both Edward and Aang? And before someone says the theme of season 6 is odd matchups or something like that, because I have a feeling that someone will, that's not much of an excuse because please tell me how Aquaman vs. Namor was an was a odd matchup when Aquaman vs. Namor was a requested match for a long time. Also explain to me how Weiss vs. Mitsuru was an odd matchup when it was the most requested match for both of them. Please tell me how Wario vs. King Deity is an odd matchup when that was the most popular one. Hell, even the matchup they showed in RTX was a highly requested matchup for years. I'm not going to say what the match is because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But it is a match that has been highly requested for a long time. So the whole the theme of season 6 of Death Battle is odd matchups is not much of an excuse there. But anyways, back on topic. My issue with Aang versus Edward on why it's a bad matchup is that they don't have anything in common. What I mean by that is that the connection between them isn't strong enough to be a death battle. The connection of Aang and Edward is that they're young age warriors who can control the elements and has elemental powers. That's it. That's all they have. Even then, it's not that much to sell the match. You see, the one thing I feel that gets overlooked a lot in the versus community is that a matchup has to sell. What I mean by that is that two characters needs to have a strong connection or even more connections to sell the idea. And I'm afraid to say that Aang vs. Edward is one of those types. There isn't much of a connection to make it an actual death battle. Honestly, Aang vs. Edward really works for DBX or Woman in Melee or even Battle Mode, but not a death battle. There were so many other opponents to choose from and they go with the one that didn't need to happen. I always saw Edward, if he ever got into death battle, would have been two opponents. I saw him always facing. And that was either Aaron Jagger from Attack on Titan or Joseph Joestar from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. For Aaron, both 
Edward and Aaron lost their moms at a young age. Both work in the military districts. Both lost their arm and legs. Uses their powers for good to save and to save the world. Both have a huge determination to push their limits to the max to save humanity. Their fathers were also scientists and so on and so forth. If you want to learn more, I'll have a link in the description to Edward versus Aaron. And if you go in the comments on that page, there's an user named Bowser Rules All. He goes into more details of the connection between Edward versus Aaron. I recommend you watch read it, it's very interesting. For Joseph, the most likely one to face Ed. Both are young age heroes. Both lost their arms and replaced it with metal, metal arms. Both have kind of a similar attitude. Somewhat. Both have very unpredictable skills. Both have stories revolving around a magical red stone. That being the red stone of Alja from Jojo and the Philosopher's Stone from Full Metal Alchemist. Both have relatively similar foes in Pillarman and the Humming Cult. Both are shown in protagonists that use their intelligence combined with their special powers. Hamon and Alchemy. Overall, the perfect matchup is pretty close. It's a pretty close fight. And both of those ideas for Ed does sell because they have a strong connection than just one thing. Aaron and Joseph works for Edward in a death battle. Not so much Aang, but that's just what I think. Now that's pretty much all all I have in my thoughts, but I wanted to go into this in a little prediction on who I think is going to win. Now the real question is, who would win between Aang and Edward? People are gonna haunt me for saying this, but I see Edward winning this fight and no it's not the reason you are thinking of I don't like the idea but the fight is something I do love I've watched both shows and I always thought who would win if Edward and Aang ever fought each other and I believe the winner would be Edward this match, this matchup is actually pretty close than what people think. Both Edward and Aang has a lot of stuff to work with thanks to Ed's alchemy and Aang's elemental abilities and so on and so forth. I guess one of the key factors in this fight I've seen people brought, bring up the most is could Aang metal bend Edward's arm and leg? Not really. While yes metal bending is a thing in the Avatar universe the issue with that is that Aang has never shown the ability to metal bend. The only person in the series that's shown metal bending capabilities it was Toph. Toph was the only one who could sh who shown metal bending's full capabilities. Aang on the other hand has never shown to do it. So Aang can't really metal bend Edward's metal arm and leg. But now let's talk 
about the two main factors in this fight. Those two being, could Edward match against Aang's avatar state? And could Aang in the avatar state take away Ed's alchemy? For the first one, in case you don't know, Aang's avatar state is pretty much like a god form for Aang. The avatar state allows Aang to use all the four elements he learned from for the series all at once. And the avatar state gives Aang all the memories of the past avatars. Now, Edward doesn't have anything like the Avatar state. He's never shown to have a transformation like the Avatar state. But he's not outmatched because Edward faced a god before. And that god's name was Father. Father was a god that wanted to take over the the world and it pretty much the god faced every single person and Edward was the one to face him the most and Edward hold his own against father so Edward can hold his own against at the avatar state since he's faced a god before now the other question is, could Aang in the Avatar state take away Ed's alchemy? Because that's what Aang did against his battle between Ozai in the final battle of Avatar. I would have to say no, because alchemy is more of a teaching thing than something you're born with. What I mean by that is like in Avatar if you're born as an airbender then you're an airbender. If you're born as a waterbender then you are a waterbender. If you're born as a firebender you're a firebender. If you're born as an earthbender you're an earthbender. Once you're born in a Pacific race, you are you're that Pacific race from then on out. Alchemy isn't like that. I mean, kids in Full Metal Alchemist can learn alchemy. So I don't believe that Aang in Avatar State can take away Edward's alchemy because it's not something Edward was born with. He just knows it. Again, this is a close match than what people think. I've watched both Avatar and Full Metal Alchemist. And I love both Aang and Edward. So I wouldn't mind if I'm right or wrong here. I just think that factoring everything that Aang and Edward has done and all the abilities they have I think Edward Eric would be the last one standing but that's just my opinion and that's pretty much all I have to say on the matter those were my thoughts on Edward versus Aang what are your thoughts on the match? Post your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have to say. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.